Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. In today's video, you will see my reading experience while reading my very first horror novel, aka Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is a gothic horror novel. I don't think it's YA. Maybe you would classify it as new adult or adult. I'm not too sure about that, but what I do know is that I have never read a horror book before in my entire life. And I thought it would be fun to document whether or not this book has been scaring the crap out of me. And on Saturday, November 7th, which will have happened once you watch this video, I will be co-hosting a live show regarding this book together with Leonie, and we have a special guest, Andrea from Book Ramble, and she is the biggest Silvia Moreno Garcia fan, so I'm so excited that she's joining us for the live show. A link to that will be in the screen somewhere up here. I think it's this corner. I don't know. <laughs> but before I'm gonna share with you all my reading experience in this reading vlog, I have a super fun announcement. If you have been following my channel for over a year right now, you've heard me talk about Emposia. And Emposia is a bookish blanket company and they have been creating warm, cozy, bookish blankets for over a year right now. And this year they created some beautiful new designs and one of them they co-created together with Jasmine from Jasmine the Reader, who is a good friend of mine here on booktube and they sent me the bookish blanket and oh my gosh it's so pretty a big advantage about their bookish blankets is that they all have a hoodie so you can kind of wear it like a cape and they even have a little button so you can secure it and like literally walk around with the blanket how amazing is that and jasmine's design together with emposia is my favorite blanket out of all of them i will show you guys my reaction when i unboxed this blanket i was just so happy and i've never seen such a beautiful blanket in my life before. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh my god, it's so pretty. Which, look at that. So like I said, you can wear it with the hoodie. And then here inside the blanket, you have the button and you secure it with this little cord right here. And just like that, you are wearing the most comfortable, warm, bookish blanket ever. I mean, come on, like this blanket is so gorgeous. So if you want to check out Emposia's bookish blankets for yourself, they have many other beautiful designs. You can use my code, Sabine10 is I believe the code, but I will leave the code here on the screen and you can save some money off the blanket and you also support me because this is an affiliate link meaning that a small portion of the cost of the blanket will go to me and my channel and it would mean a lot if you'd use my code so thank you so much to Emposia for sending me this gorgeous blanket I will be using it all winter long and my coat is valid until the end of the year so if you want to get one of these blankets with a nice discount for yourself use my coat Sabine10 do it. <laughs> and now let's go over to my reading vlog and see what I think of Mexican Gothic. Hi guys. Okay, I hope the lighting is kind of okay. Maybe I should take off my glasses. I don't know. Ooh. I look really barefaced like this. So it is November 1st, Halloween has passed, so <laughs> spooky season is kind of over, but I mean like, do you really feel the difference between October and November regarding spooky season? Like I know a lot of people are getting into like the Christmas mood and stuff like that. I like Christmas, but I don't, not a lot of feelings are attached to Christmas. <laughs> But I have read the first six chapters of Mexican Gothic. I've decided I'm gonna give you six chapter updates because then at least some things have probably happened in this book. I kind of know what this story is about right now so I can give you a little bit more of a detailed explanation. So we follow our main character called Naomi Toboada. She is a big socialite kind of gal like she goes to all these parties and likes to talk to tons of people and dress up really nicely and um her father gets a letter from naomi's cousin called catalina and she's been married to this guy called virgil i think is how i would pronounce his name sometimes i'm really iffy about like how i should pronounce names because we are dealing with a spanish or like a mexican and an english family in this book and she is talking really strangely in the in the letter i can't speak she's talking very strangely in the letter 
just like I'm doing right now about like how the house in which she lives with Virgil's family is kind of like possessed and weird things are happening and she doesn't feel like herself. So Naomi's father sends Naomi over to Catalina and she's kind of supposed to how would you phrase this? Get her cousin Catalina on the right way again and like make her feel okay and make sure that everything is fine. But the moment that Naomi arrives at the house that Catalina is staying with, with her husband and his family, which is called High Place, she starts to notice some strange things about the house and that is kind of where I'm at in the story right now. Naomi has just arrived for like a couple of days, like two to three days or something at High Place and she's just starting to notice some strange things and she's hearing some weird stories about the Doyle family, the Doyles, which is the family that Catalina married into. So some things are touched upon as well, such as feminism and racism, um, which I think is very interesting to also just combine that in this gothic horror novel. Very curious, like it already feels so mysterious. The house, the way that it is described, reminds me a lot of Hill House. I'm currently also watching The Haunting of Hill House, so I'm just like loving that together at the moment, like so much. I'm gonna start reading chapter seven. I'm on page 71 right now and I'm really, really curious. So let's continue on reading. So I wanted to read until chapter 13, but I'm really tired. <laughs> so I'm on chapter 12 right now. Not a lot of big things have happened after my last update. We've just been given some more information about the family that Naomi and Catalina are staying with. You're just having some kind of like little bits of info dumping with that, but I don't really mind with this book <laughs> for some reason. The atmosphere is really amazing. Like the way that this house is described is just so creepy and I would 100% not want to be there. It seems as if like the life has just been sucked out of that place. Our main character is having quite some like nightmares and those seem like they would be perfect in the TV show because I know that there is a TV show coming for Mexican Gothic, but I'm gonna go to bed right now because I'm really, really tired. And then I will speak to you when I have read until chapter 19, I think is where I'm supposed to be then. I don't know, we shall see. <laughs> Bye. It's November 5th and today I reached chapter 18 of Mexican Gothic. It ended on a very intense chapter and I feel like a lot of the things are gonna happen in the last 100 pages or at least I've heard that from a couple of people who've read the book. A lot of people who have a little bit of like critiques on this novel is that it has some pacing issues and until so far like I can see that to be honest nothing much has happened in the past 190 pages almost. But until so far without giving any spoilers Naomi has been having some really creepy dreams and it's very confusing or difficult to tell what is actually happening and what is not true or like is that even the case it's just very it's a big mind <laughs> all of the man in this novel are awful <laughs> and it was basically described in the last page that i read this man was an absolute liar toying with her attempting to confuse and distract her he turned kind for a second when it suited him granted her an inch of cordiality then took it away Hmm, sounds like a lot of man. <laughs> so you definitely feel the feminist tone in this one and I do enjoy Silvia Moreno Garcia's writing style because usually when in a book for like about 190 pages nothing really big happens. I usually am not very intrigued by it or like I don't really love it but with this book I don't mind too much. So it probably has to deal with Silvia's writing style. It's, I don't know, very captivating and just really nice and easy to read through. So yeah, I'll give you another update once I get to chapter 24 or something to see what will happen next. I'm very curious. <laughs> okay, so I am at chapter 24 peeps. I did it. <laughs> Page 255. It's like 12 in the evening right now, so a perfect time to read a gothic horror just before going to bed. <laughs> Shit has gone down. The family intrigued me very much even though I am recoiled by them. 
I think that's a, an English word you could use. Like, I hate every single one of them, except for Francis. But, I mean, I still have 50 pages left to find out if I could really trust him. And since this is my first horror novel and I'm almost done with it, maybe I should tell you if I'm actually really scared by it or not. And I have to say, I'm not scared by it, but I am disgusted. <laughs> with the sum of the scenes that are being described or like nightmares that Naomi has but just some themes that are talked about in this book are really quite creepy and just really wrong but I definitely see that this book would make a perfect horror show like some of the scenes are super gross and I think that they would translate really well onto the screen because obviously with like horror and thrillers and stuff like that you always have like jump scares and everything but that doesn't really happen in a book I guess but there have been tons of moments where I was reading my book and looking like I'm gonna finish reading my book tomorrow. I have some things for school to be done before I start writing my thesis on Monday. Holy crap, I'm so scared. But I will update you guys tomorrow once I finish this book with my final thoughts and everything. I'm so excited to discuss this book with Leonie and Andrea. Okay, good night. Okay, I just finished reading Mexican Gothic and I have to say I was not expecting this ending. I won't spoil anything but like the last chapter I did not expect the story to turn in that kind of a direction. I expected this book to end differently. <laughs> okay, where to start with my thoughts? I've said this before during this reading vlog until page 200. Nothing really, really big happens and the pacing is really quite slow. I know for some people that is kind of a little bit where their rating is lowered a bit, but I didn't really mind the slow pacing in the first 200 pages, but in the last 100 pages, shit went down. <laughs> I think overall I'd give the story a 7 or a 7.5 out of 10, so like a 3.5 to a 3.75 out of 5 stars. The way that Silvia Moreno Garcia describes high plays, like the house, the creepy house, and the whole setting is really quite eerie and I can definitely see where people get like this gothic horror vibe from. It's definitely in the way that Moreno Garcia describes the whole setting, the little town and the big house at the top of the mountain which is super scary and really strange. I am a little bit confused. I was gonna say disappointed but I don't think that's the right word. I'm still really confused of how the story of the mushrooms work in this book. It is very disturbing though and I know that Joel from Fictional Fates he told me you won't be able to look at mushrooms the way that you have done before reading this book and he's not wrong <laughs> but the whole backstory is still very confusing to me so maybe in tomorrow's live show that will be kind of cleared up once we have a discussion i loved our main character her willpower and just she is so motivated like i've said before and i really liked her spirit so much and i like that this book had a feminist touch and it's definitely unlike anything that I've read before. If you want to have a very eerie kind of spooky creepy book um, that gives you like haunted mansion vibes I'd say definitely pick up Mexican Gothic. For right now I want to thank you guys so much for watching this reading vlog. I hope vlog. I hope that you've had a wonderful time with me seeing how my first horror reading experience is and if you have any horror book recommendations then let me know in the comments down below and also if you guys have any like reading vlog ideas as well please leave a comment that would be super helpful if you guys enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up you can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below you can also follow me on all my different social media pages because i'm a booktuber of course i have goodreads but i also have instagram twitter an email address and of course my etsy shop it would mean the world to me if you'd check that all out again links in the description box down below <laughs> and hopefully i will see you guys in the next one bye